And welcome back to Think Tech, movies you can learn from. This one is a hmm, docudrama, maybe closer to a documentary. Uh, it's called The Mauritanian. It's very interesting. It's a very interesting movie to help us understand how this country was operating in the days and years after 9-11. Uh, maybe we have forgotten. You know, it's been more than 20 years, and maybe we have forgotten. But this movie is a, um, it's not a movie that makes you feel good. That's the title of our talk show here today. And George Kaysen is going to help me review it. George Kaysen is going to help me put it, you know, within the context of history. And it's very important that we understand it, because it is not a pretty picture at all. So, George, this is a story about a, a fellow, um, his name was um, Ahar Rahim. I guess that was the... Uh, He's the actor. He's the actor. A Al French Algerian actor who played the role. Pretty good. Pretty good role. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, so he plays the role of a guy who <laughs> he was at a wedding, and the police came in Mauritania, which is in West Africa, an Arab country, a small, poor Arab country, and took him away one day. And the next time he... You'll just notice he pops up in an American base in Germany, and from there he is spirited off um, to Guantanamo, where he spent 14 years um, trying to establish he had done nothing wrong. And they had no evidence on him. They had nothing to demonstrate that he was wrong, that he did anything wrong. And so you had Dick Cheney and Rumsfeld and all those guys in the Bush administration, um, you know, who caused him to be nevertheless prosecuted and tortured, tortured. We got a good, you know, a good, you know, showing of torture in this movie. Um, and so uh, there's so much to learn here. This is a movie that you can learn from. But it's also a movie that shakes you up, um, um, you know, about the American dream. Uh, so why don't you describe the movie, describe the plot line, describe the way this unfolded. Basically, they show him in prison with, as you alluded to, this the end is torture, right? And he's insisting that he's innocent. He had been a, he he had been a very intelligent student in Mauritania, West Africa, and he got a scholarship in Germany to go to engineering school. He got a degree in engineering. The guy was pretty sh sh sharp, you know. And then he moved to Canada. He was in Canada. And, and when 9-11 hit, he was living in Canada, working in Canada. And the Canadian uh, Secret Service or whatever, you know, the, the equivalent of CIA, did research on him and said, the guy's clean. He's not, you know, he's not in any way involved with this. But the Bush administration, George W. Bush administration and Donald Rumsfeld and Ash Attorney General Ashworth and Dick Cheney was the VP. They insisted that this guy had some involvement with 9-11, just because of familial thing or whatever. So they concocted a plot that let him know that his mother was going to be arrested in, in Mauritania to lure him back to Mauritania. And when he went to this wedding, as, as Jay was alluding to, right, they arrested him. And as Jay said, they took him to Germany first and then to Guantanamo. And 14 years he was in Guantanamo without um, and without being charged with anything. And then what's that legal term? Habeas corpus or whatever. <laughs> and he wasn't charged. So they were trying to get him to, to spill something that he didn't know. I mean, he, 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 you know, it's just basically, I think one of his relatives or cousin had called him on a phone, you know, who had, had was involved with 9-11. So this sort of imp implicated him by, uh, you know, hearsay, evidence or whatever. So th th this movie is shows uh, this woman Hollander, who was a civil rights attorney, ACLU attorney, that took his case up because she felt that this was extra legal. I mean, what, what the Bush administration was doing was not un under the Constitution. So then what they show is they show all the different aspects. Shailene, uh, uh, Jody Foster plays the attorney Hollander. 
Her assistant attorney is by Shailene Woodley, right? And then Tahar Rahim, as I said, he's a French Algerian uh, actor, really good. Those are the three main players. And then Benedict something, an English actor, played in another Benedict, I forgot his name, uh, another part here. A Cumberbatch. Then, right, exactly. Uh, ben Benedict Cumberbatch played Stuart Couch, yes. who was the prosecutor. Exactly. So, so then, then there's other smaller players, you know, actors and actresses. But bottom line here is this guy was to taken, tortured, and yet at, in the end, this attorney was able to free him. But it still took the Obama administration seven years to release him, even after he was acquitted, right? Even though it wasn't an acquittal, it was it was a habeas corpus. They could not prosecute him. They didn't have any evidence. They just left them in, left him in jail. And she got she got a, a habeas corpus writ, but they wouldn't release him even after the habeas corpus. Right. So there was politics. You know, it's 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 our CIA that meddles everywhere in the world, created, brought down the shot. Look what we got over there in Iran now. So bottom line is, you know. This guy's rights were completely taken away because he was a Muslim, because he was an Arab, right? And they had to find somebody, you know, to pin this on. And and they show some of these, you know, right wing military guys saying that somebody's got to pay for the three thousand Americans. I mean, my mother's friends lost their son from Manhasset, North Shore, Long Island. Fitz, Cantor Fitzgerald, their kids died there, right? I mean. We know people in Farmingdale, four or five of my high school. Well, you have, it takes you back to the time when the, um, the U.S. was reacting um, yeah. to, to the um, to, to the World Trade Center, and um, uh, I think I think we forget we forget just exactly how ticked off everybody was. This was a, yeah. a an attack into the heartland of America, into the heartland of of, of Wall Street. Yep. Um, and uh, it was it was brutal, and all these people died. Actually, you know, I, I remember thinking, hmm, 3,000 people, it could have been much more. We, we were kind of lucky that it was only 3,000, but that's a lot. And all these people were, you know, brutally murdered by this attack. So people were really ticked off. And the question is, uh, how, how, as a politician, because at the end of the day, it's politics, how, as a politician, um, do you want to um, handle this? Um, some people are opportunistic. Some people figure they got to have a fall guy, yep. and and that's what he was. This this, this fellow out of Mauritania, the Mauritanian, he was. They made him a fall guy. They somehow connected him with very loose connection to uh, Osama bin Laden. Um, and stuck with it. Uh, they had no evidence. The prosecutor, as I mentioned, was uh, um, Benedict Cumberbatch. Stuart Couch was a senior Marine lawyer. They gave this to him because he was a crackerjack and he was going to prosecute. But he was also a good lawyer. And he said, wait a minute, boys. Um, I don't have any evidence. You want me to prosecute without evidence? I can't do that. And he ultimately um, withdrew. He, he re rejected the case. They found someone else, but um, he rejected the case, which is to his credit. He, he becomes the hero from a, a yes, legal point yes, of view. Yes, yes. But this is this is um, this covers Guantanamo. Uh, they they found people who they wanted to make into scapegoats, and uh, I'm not sure they ever got any, you know, real convictions. I I think, and there are still people there. There are still people there uh, who have. You know, how long has it been? More than way more than 20 years. Um, and, you know, they're still in detention. Um, and Bush didn't know what to do with them. And Cheney and um, what's his name didn't, didn't know what to do with them. And so they left them in, in hiatus. You know, my brother and my sister in law, my brother Jane, my sister in law, um, Linda Greenhouse, came out here and spoke at the law school about the legality of this way back when. And it's really shocking to find out how many how many rules, how many American moral rules were broken in creating um, Gitmo and in perpetuating it for so many years. And 
still now today. If you remember, uh, Obama was going to terminate it, but he didn't. And certainly Trump didn't. It's still there. The Marines are still there. And this was, um, you know, a very detailed examination of the brutality. Um, it, it doesn't make you feel patriotic. It makes you wonder why we didn't apply the the rules of the rules of fairness, the rules of prosecution, and um, and uh, you know, uh, finding people guilty on the basis of uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, and not using torture to extract uh, confessions. I mean, it was really third world. Uh, and the government out of Washington, out of the Oval Office, was determined to make this poor guy pay, even though he didn't do anything wrong. So Jody Foster was, she wasn't, I don't think she was ACLU. She was in a law firm. And she got, it was, but it was this kind of liberal law firm. And she, and uh, I mean, I'm taking this in the movie, but I think it's all true. And she she um, had to argue with her partners, but she ultimately took the case, not because she felt that he was innocent, but she felt that he needed counsel. He deserved counsel. And she fashioned her, um, you know, her uh, legal strategy on habeas corpus because because there was no prosecution. They just left him in jail for years. Yeah. And uh, she succeeded in that. And that was to her credit. Um, but what was remarkable was that, from a political point of view, they didn't care. They left him in jail after the habeas corpus. They ignored the order uh, from the federal judge. So, I mean, you know, this is not something to be proud of. You know, we talk now about the lack of patriotism. We talk about the, the divisiveness in the country. Uh, Trump talks about uh, the swamp and how he's he's going to, uh, you know, correct a, a wayward government and all this. Um, I don't think he was thinking about Guantanamo, but this story is not is not complimentary to the United States. Uh, at some point along the way, they all knew, every player knew that this man had done nothing, that there was no evidence to implicate him in any way. And yet they left him in jail. Worse yet, they continued to try to extract the confession using all manner of torture. And the movie goes through that. The movie shows you the torture. It's very uncomfortable to watch this movie because they keep on doing it. And these guys are Marines. They're supposed to be our troops, our soldiers. And, and they're doing hideous things to a guy who was an ordinary fellow. There's nothing remarkable about him. But they figured if they, if they put enough pressure on him, and tortured him enough, he would admit to anything. And he did. That's he the most interesting. Right. He confessed to something he didn't do because he couldn't stand, not the pain of the torture, he couldn't stand the threat that they would bring his mother to Guantanamo and subject her to the same thing, which was a lie. Just a lie. It was a scam on him. And so, you know, not only did they torture him, but they lied to him uh, and they ignored federal process. They broke all the rules. Um, it's not a pretty story. But there you have it. I mean, you know, the thing is, uh, you and I, we look for movies that are mm -hmm. movies we can learn from. And this one, I said to myself, gee, do I want to know this stuff? Do I want to learn this stuff? I'm a very patriotic person, but this is undermining my patriotism. You know, I mean, I, I, was, uh, I was in the service time of Vietnam. I cared a lot about the country, right or wrong, um, and since. And I've always cared about the country. But when you see a movie like this, you say to yourself, it, it went off the tracks. And yes, we had 9-11. Yes, 3,000 people died. But did we have to do this? And we're still doing it? We broke our own rules and our own morality in this. And I don't think there was ever any accountability. Jay, we grew up in the Eisenhower administration. He was honorable, you know? I mean, my dad was did, did top secret work, to defense, the distant early warning system above the Arctic. We didn't know where he was in the 50s, you know? He was, a, we were pa patriotic. My dad used to kiss America's ground because what he dealt with in his life, right? But somewhere they went wrong. It started with, you know, Reagan with 
uh, Jimmy Carter, the whole Iran thing, you know, how they played that game, right? You know, how they brought down Carter with that Iranian, the, the embassy, U.S. embassy. And then from there, George Bush and all these Rumsfeld and, um, you know, Ash, uh, Ashcroft and, and Cheney. I mean, this, this really makes you think about who's running our government above the... Well, it makes you wonder about the um, the morality of the senior officials in government. Senior, these are the top guys uh, ordering torture. Really, um, and and you you realize that politics uh, um, trumps all. I hate to use that term, um, and you realize that um, they they uh, they heard the calls for blood in the country. Uh, a lot of people were really really ticked off. It's like a you know a, a bad cop movie. They said, "Well, we got to find somebody. We got to make an example. Um, even if he's not didn't do anything wrong, we have to make an example and satisfy these these calls for vengeance." And that's you know I'm sure that well, was an interesting boogeyman. You know, uh, the George H W Bush uh, Willie Horton thing. Remember that Willie Horton thing? Now they all they, 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 now you know. African Americans, Hispanics, other people who are marginal in our society, they find a boogeyman. And this guy was obviously Muslim and obviously an Arab. So they used they used him for political yeah. purposes. This this is this was a you know, and all these Marines and soldiers were they had to find somebody's gotta that one guy in the movie says, someone has got to pay for all those people who died, right? So this innocent guy has to pay, you know, because he's you know. What do they call it when you when they take a, a black person and they arrest them in the street the police uh, racial profiling this is basically that right this guy was a, in, an engineer working well, in Germany and, and they didn't know that much about uh, Osama bin Laden they didn't know um, about um, you know the organizations that he was involved in um, they were just um, um, shooting fish in a barrel, anybody who was Arab. Is she? The same yeah. thing that Trump, when Trump blocked all Muslims from entering the country, you know, back when? Typical. Uh, this Trump is American is racism. Yeah. That's what it is. You're Trump right. Is doing, I, I, I mentioned that Ashcroft had us Armenians, you know, uh, terror, as terrorists until all these Ar Armenian business people, Republicans start screaming and Democrats that they, they dropped it. Ashcroft, they were, they were telling us they were, we're, we're terrorists you know so i mean basically it's a racial kind of thing and this guy fit the bill to scapegoat i don't remember the end of the movie george maybe you do um, um was was the mauritanian compensated was there any accountability he's got a lawsuit now i think uh against the government but um at the end of the movie the only thing i remember is they they showed the actual uh, attorney hollander and they showed the actual schlocky, you know, guy, and how he's living a normal, uh, uh, he's living a normal life. He got married. He's got two kids now, you know. But the thing is, I'm t I think it, the, the movie just ended when when the attorney was able to get the what habeas corporate, yeah. Was well, able well, to, well, able to get him out. Uh, they, but that was um, uh, that was recently. So if he was incarcerated in say uh, 2002. Right. And you had 14 years. I think he got out in only 2016, 2016 20, which is not that long ago. Not, you know? not that long ago. But he's, uh, made, he's, he's made good for the last... Well, he should be compensated. But more than that, the, the people in government who violated his rights and tortured him for years, uh, they should be held accountable. Shouldn't they be prosecuted? Shouldn't uh, well, George... You know, remember Abu, Gra Abu Ghraib, um, you know, in the Abu Middle Ghraib. East? Uh, there was there was some prosecution there within the military, um, but I don't think there was ever any prosecution around. But Guantanamo. what about the top? The top guys. This all came down from the top. No, right? it was political. They were too big to to fry, and uh, really, that's a problem that we have now. Yep. And the two systems. Is, if I tortured somebody in Abu Ghraib, um, then I get prosecuted. But if the guy in the Oval Office orders the torture. Uh, he doesn't get for two systems, you know. It's the same problem as the as the Trump problem, and it, and maybe the makers of this movie had that in mind when they they showed us, um, you know, this very disturbing 
story. But let's look at it as a movie. I thought the production values were very good. I thought that Jodie Foster, who I didn't recognize at first, uh, she's aged. They she aged was, her, I think. I think they so. aged her I think, like, with makeup. It, I don't she was tough. Battle. She was a tough character. I had, I had a little trouble understanding the dynamic of her character because uh, it was clear that she was not convinced he was innocent. She was only convinced that she had a job to do to get him out. Um, and, that, you know, it's different. Uh, but she was very committed, obviously, to the cause, and she stuck with it for years and years, and ultimately he learned to trust her. But and, eventually, and, but, but eventually when, when she got that, the, all the, the notes, the I forgot what they call it, MEM or something, that she were, they were, finally was able to get those things, she realized that he confessed under torture. And that really opened her eyes to what was really going on. That this con because when at first when they heard that he had confessed, right? Both she and Shailene Woodley felt, oh my God, we're we're helping, you know, we're aiding a person who actually is guilty, right? Yeah, her assistant, uh, Shailene, walked out on the case, didn't want to be involved, exactly, because she felt that this guy was uh, responsible for nine eleven, but it was a it was a coerced uh, confession, and uh, that was that was really interesting that that people would do that. Um, even though there was serious questions about the validity of the confession, uh, she walked out on it. She didn't want to be. And people, you got to remember how angry people were. This is the first time since the War of 1812 um, that, you know, somebody came on American soil and, and injured and killed people. Um, it, was, it, was, it was troubling, I remember, at the time. And, 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 and the world changed. You know, I remember a, a friend of mine called me up on the morning of 9-11, told me to watch the television. And I said to him, I said, the world will never be the same. And it hasn't been the same. Jay, do you know, I know people who died in 9-11. In, 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 in do you know people? I mean, I actually know people from both where I grew up and my mother's close friends up on the North Shore of Long Island, whose kids were working for these you know, well, it was, it was really, really it's traumatic. Hard. It was just so. It was such a vicious, premeditated, uh, planned, and brutal, fatal attack for so many people. But so the country, take, the country was ticked off. But you know, at a level, level, you can understand that they needed to find a scapegoat, or a whole bunch of scapegoats. Yeah. But, but I think we really didn't know. I didn't know. I, I suspected it. Uh, just exactly how. Brutal they were, the Marines in Guantanamo. You know, um, there's a, a lawyer in town by the name of Ed Burke. We had him on the show a couple of times, and he volunteered to be counsel for one of the people in Guantanamo. Not this guy, but other people who were incarcerated. He said they, they made it so hard for him and to represent his client. And the years went by, and he really didn't have any progress. I'm not sure that how that ended, except that he was so frustrated that the American system of ju justice, as we know it from, you know, practice in continental U.S., I guess, um, it, it was not it was not applied. There were no rights uh, given to these guys, and the con they refused to allow them any constitutional rights. They just held them in this very strange prison offshore in a naval base at the eastern end of uh, Cuba, of all places. And they didn't report back. They didn't allow the press in very much. Um, and they were violating everything. And they were doing this. Uh, why exactly? Well, it was in the name of retribution, I suppose. And this was a clear example of that. If we had forgotten, and many of us never knew, but if we had forgotten what happened in Guantanamo, this movie reminds us very starkly what happened. So um, I think Jodie Foster was a little stiff. I uh, never thought too much of her as an actress. I'm sorry. I thought uh, Shailene Woodley was an interesting character, but they didn't give her as much space as she, as she deserved in the movie. I thought uh, the prosecutor, Benedict Cumberbatch, was, uh, he played a good Marine. He was a, you know, a, a stand-up straight straight-laced Marine, and he, he made the right choice. At first, I was worried that he was going to prosecute without evidence, 
Um, but ultimately, as a professional matter, he did the right thing. However, you understand, it ruined his career. Yeah. It ruined his career. They called him a traitor for failing to prosecute without evidence. Um, and I thought the, uh, I thought, uh, what's his name, Tahar Rahim, who played the Mauritanian, he was excellent. And when at the end of the movie, they showed um, photographs of the, the real Mauritanian. And um, there was a similarity. <laughs> there was certain good nature. I said to myself, gee, this guy's been through so much. 14 years, you know, taken out of his life and torture for a good part of that. And here he is having, um, you know, a family and smiling and exactly. um, retaining his good nature. The, the character had, and the real person had a, a very good nature. And so they, they portrayed that. And he really was a person of good nature, even after all the torture. <laughs> wow. You, know, you, have, you have to understand the human, human nature. They try to forget, you know. I mean, I know people went through the Holocaust. My family physician, all his family got killed in the Holocaust. My own parents in Turkey, what happened to them? And they move on. They go into business. They, so this guy... He moved on. You know, he forgot about all these horrible experiences. Maybe it still left a mark on him, right? But he moved I, on. And I'm sure, but nice you know, you can tell it's, there's a phenomenon here. You know, if you, if, you're, if you come out of a torture situation and you're still alive, exactly. you, know, you give thanks for every day. Exactly. And you're, you're stronger somehow, even though you've had a terrible time. Yeah. And that was the case uh, for the real individual. So it was interesting, as you mentioned, at the end of the movie, we see that, the, you know, the real. Um, Mauritanian. We see the um, the, the real um, the Jodie Foster character, the, Hollander, the defense right. Hollander, the real uh, Shailene Woodley character. We see the real people. That was so interesting to see that happen. Um, so, I don't know. As, as a movie, I would say it completely captivated me. Yeah. Um, largely because I didn't know. I, I was not really attuned to how morally violent this was and, and how these guys who represent the United States supposed to keep us safe. Um, there are troops, our, our boys uh, were involved in such awful proceedings uh, coming from the top. This is, you know, you've heard about it, but somehow this movie brings it home and it, uh, it changes your view of all the boys in in uniform. Um, and, and there were women there, too, as I remember, yeah. There were women in uniform, too, who, who lied to him and who harassed him. So it wasn't just the boys. Anyway, um, so as a movie, what did you think of it? I like this movie because of what it revealed. You know, we'd all heard about Abu Ghraib and showing those people with the hoods on their heads and stuff. But unless you actually see this in a movie, it doesn't really completely hit home. I mean, you, you know about it. You're upset about it. But this really enraged me more, you know. I mean, I actually liked when I was growing up as a kid, I liked Eisenhower just as much. I loved JFK, but I didn't dislike Eisenhower. I mean, he was decent guy. He was a military guy. You know, he was decent. But this George W. Bush administration, you know, God, these guys, I mean, it came, he came face to face with that this is coming from the top echelons of the administration. So to me, I, I just on the content, I would give it a 10. Um, but it, the production values were pretty good acting. You know, Jodie Foster, they, they made her up as older. I, she doesn't look that old. I mean, they, the makeup, they wanted to make her look older and to look like Hollander, who was pretty, you know, she was sort of, you know, older, you know, wrinkles mm -hmm. and whatever. So, but the thing is, I love this movie. I think it's a great movie. I think everybody should see it, especially in the days of Donald J. Trump, where this whole thing is going on with his, well, he's being, you know, indicted this, this way, this, that way. We've got to bring our country back to honor. And, you know, I grew up with Republicans all around me. They were, I mean, I didn't agree with them, but they were honorable people. We've got to go back to where we have an honorable 
society and honorable administrations. And I don't feel the George W. Bush administration was honorable at all. After seeing this movie, it, it hit home. So really good movie. Watch this movie to your, to your viewers. Watch this movie and learn about what the heck was going on. Leave it at that. 10 plus. I'm with you. 10 plus. Because we learn so much. And we learn that government sometimes needs a scapegoat for political purposes, to stay in office. And government lies to us. George Bush was lying to us. All those guys around him were lying to us. I think they knew um, that uh, this Mauritanian guy was innocent, that they were lying to us and to him and trying to torture him into becoming the scapegoat. That's awful. And the Marines who mercilessly beat him up, uh, that, that, that was an honor. You know, how can you say, this is very troubling, how can you say they were honorable men uh, protecting the nation? No, torture is not honorable. Sorry. So anyway, yeah, it's a revelation. It's a lesson that we need to know now about then. And it's a lesson we have to build in going forward. And that's why this movie is uh, it's a 10 plus. Thank you very much, George. I always enjoy these discussions. And we'll find some more like this. Thank George you. Case, you know, a movie reviewer here on Movies You Can Learn From. And we sure learned on this one. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.